Uh, welcome everyone to our first ever Facebook Live. Um, we have with us our co-founder, two-time Ironman and two-time IT world champion, Chris McCormick, also yeah. known as Mika. Thanks, Lee. You're supposed to have a big round of applause. <laughs> Um, we also have with us Cameron Dye. Um, one sec, I'm gonna, I need to just make sure there's something that's happening. People are saying we can't see. We're not happening. We're all over the world. That's pretty important. T's in New Zealand, which is the state of Australia. Five people watching us. Yeah. That's my family. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Carolyn's got watching, so. <laughs> I've got my cell phone too, so that don't count one of them. Okay, so back. We're all back. Everyone okay. can hear us. Everyone can hear us. Perfect. Okay. So, hello everyone again. Um, my name is Anastasia Bogoslavskaya, but you could call me Stacy, and I'm going to be the moderator of this Facebook Live. Um, this Facebook Live is sponsored by Hamilton Island, which is going to play host to our first ever event, March 17th to the 19th. And with us today, as I said, sorry, I'm gonna introduce you again, our co-founder, two-time Ironman and two-time ITU world champion, Chris McCormick, also known as Maka. Say hi Hello. if you want. Hi, cheers. Then we have Cameron Dye, number eight. Um, I am track, and he's from the USA, or as some people call United States of America. And what's um, up, everybody? He's a three-time three -time champion, lifetime fitness series. I've also personally heard <clears throat> that he is not to be underestimated and that he is our wild card. So you never know Ooh, what's going to happen. Card. Take the wild card. Yeah. <laughs> Then we have uh, Brent McCoy, number 83, who's from Canada, where I'm also from. Uh, he's super fast. He has uh, had five times where he's done an Ironman under eight hours. So there's a lot of speed in those legs, which most likely is going to really help you in the short distance formats that we have. So we are going out, Brent. Yeah, let's hope. Let's hope so. Yeah, yeah. Oh, she said you were fast. I thought you said she. I thought she said you were fat. Yeah, I thought you said fat. No, that was, that was when I was talking to her a month ago. Ah, uh, okay, okay. okay. Oh, because yeah, things have changed. It's the accent. And then uh, we have Terenzo Bazzoni, which is number thirteen from New Zealand. He's a really tough. Uh, contender on a winning streak from what I hear. Uh, he's won a couple uh, world champion Ironman uh, championships. Do you want to say? Well, a couple races. Just <laughs> small races. Years. They went big. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So for everyone who's watching, uh, please send us questions. Uh, Chris is going to ask a couple questions. The guys can ask each other questions, but we'd love to hear from the fans. So please comment below. And also if you're on Twitter or anywhere else, um, use hashtag I am super league and we'll see your questions and get them answered. All right. All right. So this is our first time ever. So anyone who's watching this, we're learning as we go, but it's pretty cool. huh? Most of these lads I know, I saw Terenzo and Brent uh, earlier in the year in, uh, was it late last year in Bahrain and Cam? I was watching you recently at the Island House where you dominated. But boys, Super League's launched. We're ready to rock. I know we've been talking about it for quite some time. And I want to start with you, Cam. Yeah. There's been a lot of talk. There's been a lot of talk around big bike strength, big swim and big bike strength. You seem to be where well, you are regarded after speaking to a lot of the guys as the best non-drafting Olympic distance athlete on the planet right now. But is this short, tight format something that'll suit you? There's one thing to be able to push out some big bike power over 40K, which you've done in St. Anthony's, you've done a lot of these events, so you successfully do that at Island House. But are these short, sharp circuits where it's a lot criterion style riding suit you? You're a taller guy? Uh, I mean, your guess is as good as mine. I mean, I guess we'll see. This is one of those things that I've always wanted to do. 
um, you know, watching the, uh, the old F1 stuff in Australia and, and seeing it doing a couple super sprints here and there, but I've never done a race like this. So, um, I mean, we'll see, I think for sure the second day with the TT, uh, that'll play to my strengths. Um, yeah. as far as the actual circuit though, I mean, like you say, it's short, you got the one hill, um, a lot of, a lot of ups and downs, going to be a lot of accelerations and probably a pretty tight group for most of the race. So, I mean, we'll see. I don't think it necessarily plays to my strengths the way, like you say, a 40K would. But, I mean, when you're strong, you're strong. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, any of the particular formats you're looking for? You said the equaliser because of the bike ride. But what about the uh, the triple mix with the bike ride starting first? Is that something that you're yeah, interested I mean, in? Well, I mean, we'll see. I mean, it's going to be fun. And uh, I, I think for sure the equaliser is probably the one I'm looking forward to the most. Um, and that probably plays the most of my strengths, but I think the, the triple mix will be good. I mean, too bad we can't ever finish one of the days on the bike, but, uh, yeah, do it, do it, going first on the bike will for sure be a, be a good change. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Brent, you actually raced this back in the day, some super sprint stuff back in Australia. I remember years and years ago when you were a little guy and never have a beauty <laughs> care. Um, now you're excited. You've been doing this long course stuff. You've done two Olympic games. Last one in London, you raced in Athens. Was it Athens at your first Olympics? Yeah. Back when the yeah, that won? was the first one. A long time yeah. ago. Hey, uh, when I was a boy, you know, it's, uh, are you excited about this? You've, you've become the man in Ironman racing at the moment. You posted a mega time last year in Brazil. You're going back to defend this year. Are you, you think you still got the speed in those legs? You're one of the older guys on the start list at 36. <laughs> I used to be one of the younger guys. What's happened? Don't worry, McMahon. You're still young. You're still young at heart. <laughs> <laughs> and you look. That's you what look people keep well. saying. What does that mean? You don't look a day older than you did eight years ago. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I'm definitely looking forward to uh, trying to find some some youth again. It's uh, it's been a long time since I've done some short fast stuff, but. Uh, I did the the Island House Triathlon in the fall and um, kind of reminded me about how how fun it is, but also how painful it is. So, um, you know, I think it's good to mix it up after you know many years of of not doing it. It's you know that energy system and that ability to hurt. You know, it's there. You just got to remember and and touch in on it. So that's uh, that's what I'm looking forward to is kind of punishing myself in a different way and instead of just going hard and steady for eight hours uh blowing your brains out for 16 minutes or whatever it's going to take uh that's going to be fun beautiful beautiful and t is there anything you can't do mate you've uh, you got a range like no one else in the sport mate in my opinion <laughs> as you can't play the violin he well he can i wouldn't I'm be surprised just, <laughs> I've, just, I've just got a big heart that's all that's yeah. all i put it down to is i have a big heart now, but for me, T, we've known each other since I met you a little kid. We've trained together back when I was skinny and racing. But uh, I, I personally believe you've got the best range in the sport. You're the Mo Farah of triathlon. There's, you, we saw her last year in Island House. You were leading this series against the world's best. And uh, then, what, a few weeks later, you go and drop a 751 Ironman. And then the week later, you win Ironman 70.3 Bahrain. That's a range, mate. Are you excited about this? You're going to be coming off some long course training. But there's, is there anything yeah, you thanks, can't Matt. do? <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Give me, uh, give me a little bit way too much kudos, but um, I'll, when I when statement. I heard, yeah, I know. We'll sort it out later. <laughs> when I when I heard you were putting this on, I um, I got really excited, and uh, that's the, my one my one regret is having to shift from the the short course ITU distance racing, which is still long compared to Super League triathlon. Um, but yeah, having to sh well deciding to shift to the long longer course, the uh, seventy point three and Ironman. Um, and there's, I mean, every time I watch an ITU race, I kind of yeah, there's a part of me that that misses it, that misses that that hurting, that digging, digging really deep. Uh, with the Ironman, you're you're kind of you got to be comfortable at being uncomfortable for a long time. But with the with the short course stuff, it's a it's a whole nother level. You kind of have to find three or four more gears than, than what you're looking for when you're doing a full distance Ironman race. Um, am I going to be able to tap into that? Uh, hopefully, yeah, hopefully I don't stall in fourth gear and, uh, and, 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 uh, that's, and that's my max. Hopefully I can uh, find a, find a gear five and gear six and, and be somewhat competitive against, against these guys. Uh, race 
Cam and also Brent at Island House at the end of last year. And I mean, I I was hoping each day I would actually get stronger with with the with with the base that I have. Uh, I would think, yeah, I mean, it would make sense that day two and day three, uh, your body just getting warmed up. But I kind of went the other way. Uh, halfway through day one, I was in first place. At the end of day one, I was in second. After day day two, I was in third. After day three, I was in fourth. So I had to scratch my head a bit. Go, what's what's going on here? But I think a lot of it comes down to the short course guys that their ability to to go anaerobic and actually recover from that. They, they have a, a much greater ability to do that. So uh, for me, just having having that experience under the belt will will help me when it comes to racing and help me just understand what I need to be doing uh, in terms of recovery and uh, and what kind of limits I can I can push on the early early days of the racing. Beautiful. I think I think for us, like when we uh, when we sat down and we planned Super League, there was a component of me being an ex-racer saying, okay, how can we put some formats together that suit guys like yourself? There's a lot of talk around the Brownleys and the Murrays and the and, and these ITU guys, and, and it seems that the, the famous guys within the sport are the McMahons, the Terenzo Bazzonis, the Fredinos, these sort of athletes. So how do we bring a league together where you can both race televised and on television? I know there's a lot of talk around these distances and it being very, very short, but do you, do you do believe, and you sort of touched on it a bit then, that the endurance athlete will be able to recover better on those last days, especially in that eliminator, any of this? The, the Ironman guys? <laughs> We're going to find out, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I think it's a different, I mean, it's a different ball game, eh? When, you, when you're going that anaerobic, your, your heart rate. 20, 30 beats higher than, than what you're looking at when you're doing an Ironman or, or most training sessions. And uh, and just trying to flush that lactic acid out of the system is 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 a different kettle of fish, I, I, I think. But um, as long as you can kind of keep it on, on the good side of, of that line and, and, and tread pretty close to that line, I think, yeah, I think we could, could be competitive. And Cam, you're representing the USA, right? So you've got you and Joe Malloy both competing for the US. Um, US on the IT, you got you guys in the team really in 2013, you got the bronze. It was sort of the last time we saw real success, and I mean with the utmost respect, at the top level with the US athletes at an IT level. They've had a lot of success at the Ironman level. Why do you think that is? Well, I mean, we, we did just have Gwen go win the gold medal and the, uh, the, men's the US, the US team the men's won this year. I mean on the men's side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The men's side. I know what you mean. Absolutely dominant, yeah. No, no, I know what you mean. Um... You know, I, I don't know. It's a good question. I think uh, I think we have a lot of talent, but I think we've had a struggle developing that talent. Um, you got a lot of guys that it's still in the U.S. It's triathlon's a tough go until after college because there's no real development pipeline. I mean, Ben Canute's probably the closest thing to an American that did triathlon starting in high school at a high level. Um, and you know, a lot of the Europeans, like you guys down in Australia, New Zealand, and you have sort of that pipeline to develop these athletes. And I think the U S has really missed the boat in getting people when they're young. Um, I mean, they're trying to find these flash in the pan, you know, once in a lifetime Gwen type athletes. And, uh, you go try to recruit college swimmers that can also run. And that's not real on the male side. I mean, if you've ever seen a division one swimmer, the average guy is like six to 180. And yeah. the average runner is like five, eight, a buck, 25 soaking wet. So yeah. to try and find somebody that can do both of those things at a high enough level uh, to compete with the ICU guys is, I mean, that's, that's a tough thing to find. So I think it has to be made. And I think there's plenty of guys with the talent. You're just struggling to get them started before they're, you know, 22, 23 and out of college especially because most of us end up going to college on either a running scholarship or a swimming scholarship. And then once you're at university, you're stuck doing the one sport. Um, I mean, so like myself, I didn't start doing any cycling until after college. Um, so then it's an even bigger thing when you're trying to go to the IT level where I mean, it's one thing to ride a TT bike and basically go on a straight line and no hills or anything to really speak of. But then the ITU, you got to be able to ride a bike. And not only ride it fast, you have to be able to handle it. That's, I think, another big thing for the Americans is you didn't grow up bike racing. That's not necessarily something you have have the skill set for. So I think we've sort of, as a country, we've put our athletes sort of behind the eight ball and trying to catch up late in the late in the game. And, I mean, if you look at all the guys, you know, the Terenzos and yourself and Brett, I mean, all you guys, 
raced at the ITU level as juniors and U23s, and that's not a thing in the U.S. really. I mean, we've had some success, uh, but a lot of those guys end up burning out one way or another. So I don't, I don't, I mean, I don't work for the Federation. I don't know how they solve the problem. They've tried to bring in people from all over the world. They've tried different approaches. And I think at the end of the day, it's, it's always going to be a bit of a struggle until, you know, something like Super League might be the perfect thing because potentially it could get it on TV and it could get the attention of younger athletes and, you get those junior kids that are trying to decide, okay, do I want to play baseball or do I want to do triathlon? Well, in the U.S. right now, you want to play football or whatever. And I think that's the biggest problem is the pipeline doesn't exist. Well, my, the it's a great show to develop those skills. <laughs> it was that the Canadians are so good then, Brent. Was that the Simon Whitfield effect after Sydney or is there a – you know, you guys border with each other. What is it a different structure there? I obviously understand that US college system, and I do agree, you lose a lot of your talent to those individual sports in the US. But is it any different in Canada? Why have you got Lionel Sanders coming along and, and doing amazing things in Ironman? You've got young Tyler yourself, um, Simon Whitfield, you've got such amazing history just what, across the border. Yeah, I think, uh, I think, yeah, we got, as Canadians, we got exposed to triathlon excellence early. And I think that got a lot of people and kids interested in it. And so we, we saw that sort of influx of, of athletes come in. And, um, you know, and that, at that time, there was actually, there was a lot of racing in the U.S., you know, the Olympic distance races and some shorter races as well. And, um, you know, so we, we, we could race it head to head. And over the last few years, there's, you know, like Cam was saying, there's been, there's been a bit of a lull, even on the Canadian, uh, side for, for talent. And, um, you know, like I, I grew up when I was, you know, in the ITU racing, I was down in Australia, you know, racing all of you guys and trying to, you know, get my experience doing these short events where you could race multiple times in a short period and practice your transitions and practice your bike handling and and be in a really exciting intense environment which was great practice for eventually going on to olympic distance itu and and the olympics and there's no real other format in the world where you can race the best guys multiple times in one day as well as in a, in the next few days, and you know, so I, I think the Super League is going to be an opportunity for a lot of talent to potentially grow and certain talent to shine as well. And you know, for us older guys, it's going to be fun to to watch some of those young guys develop and and see, you know, you're going to see who who the the future of the sport's going to be coming through the Super League. All right, so I'm going to go on a limb here, boys. You've seen the start list. You've got the best of breed racing. You've got your Olympic champion. You've got Gomez. You've got Mola. You've got Murray. All these ITU guys. You sort of represent the Ironman or the non-drafting guys. Who are you most looking for to win this thing? Who, who do you think <laughs> is going to be? Okay, T, you give me an answer. You, mate. Beauty. Because i got all my money on you, T. I've got every dime my whole house. Is on you. My kids are going to come double on that. <laughs> Uh, yep, yep, yep. Good job. It's a short thing. Yep. Yeah, yeah my, sure thing. My money's on T. He, he, he won Bahrain at the week after an Ironman, so he's doing New Zealand, so he's going to win this thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, we will see, we will see. I think, um, I don't know. Uh, I mean, Mario, racing him at Island House, he's got, he's got a pretty good run on him. Um, as long as he doesn't cramp up like he did at Ireland. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, Alistair and Johnny, they're, they're going to be tough. They've got that raw speed. They haven't, they haven't started to slow down by dabbling in, uh, in the long course racing. Uh, whereas Gomez is, he's definitely thinking about going long. He's done a few 70.3s. He's thinking about doing Ironman. So, so you, you've got the, that raw young speed that, that the Brownleys have. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if anyone's going to be able to match that uh, day in and day out over all three disciplines, but um, I think I think Cam Cam's going to on that that eliminator uh, the um, not the eliminator 
sorry, the equaliser. Um, my, my dyslexia is taking over. I think on the on the equaliser, Cam Cam's going to be pretty uh pretty pretty tough to beat. Yeah, yeah. What about how do you see yeah. young Ryan Bailey? He's a, this TT on the equaliser on day two on the Saturday at six point two k with a the last one point six is brutal. You'll see it on the island. It's a it's a tough climb. It sections there about twenty two and a half percent. You see Bailey, he's sitting in at about 60 kilos. You guys are a little heavier. He rides a bike all right. He can crash one all right too. I saw in Rio a few years ago, but he, <laughs> he rides well. And, and and understanding how this equalizer works for the people watching is you you have this morning time trial session, uh, six kilometers. You'll post the time. And in the afternoon, it'll be a pursuit style race start where the winner of the TT will, will go first and you'll be pursued. Now, what the, the, the part in this race is quite interesting and it's why we call it the equalizer. It's a swim, run, swim bike run so in the afternoon so as you come out of the second swim the countdown clock will, will start and people can be eliminated at that point because if the lead bike rider finishes a lap you're out so someone like cam or, or bailey with a big bike in the morning could technically eliminate half this field is uh are you looking for the lighter guys with that time trial start to be good on the bike anyone no yeah, yeah. i think <laughs> Just cab. Because it's, gonna... it's, it's it's flat till you get to the hill though, so you got yeah, you got you got to be able to stomp stomp on the pedals before you get yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. I spoke I spoke yeah, to yeah, uh, a yeah. big guy like you, see. I was no, a big boy a like flat. me or Cam. You get get enough momentum in that four and a half k's on the flat to just drift up the hill. Yeah, just push yeah. up the hill. Twenty twenty four percent, no big deal. Nah. Yeah, nah. <laughs> I mean, I don't know the weights necessarily the biggest deal. It's gonna be like you saw when uh when the ITU held uh what was the Swiss race that went straight up the hill? Oh Kitzbühel. Yeah, when Kitzbühel went up the horn, I mean Ali just tore the legs off everybody. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I mean that's obviously a much more sustained climb, but I mean having raced him in Beijing and I mean the, the dude can ride a bike for sure, whether it's flat or up or um, I mean, and Richard too. They, if it's, especially if it's short and technical, I think the uh, I think it'll be the struggles. It's only six k, so I mean the gaps aren't going to be that big. And so I think uh, I think any of us would have a hard time lapping out pretty much anybody just because it's not going to be that big of a gap. I don't think. I'm good. I'm panicked about that. I hope so. I hope you're right on that. There's been a lot of discussions about just how tough this hill is and what the gaps are going to be. And when, uh, you know, there's a lot of talk about exactly that. Richard Murray and, and Alistair Brownlee being very, very powerful on that climb. A lot of talk around Ryan Bailey. A hell of a lot of talk around yourself, Cam, on this, on this, uh, on this race. And we're looking at who potentially could be eliminated here because you, you're looking at about a 90, under a 90 second lap for that one kilometre bike circuit. So after a time trial in the morning, a swim, run, swim, right. 90 seconds down, it, it's, it's, not, it's not impossible, right? So, no, uh, it's certainly not impossible. Yeah, yeah. I'm, it's gonna, how, how, how long is the hill again? Is it 800 metres? The hill is 1.6 kilometres, of which 800 metres of it is absolutely horrific. I can't wait to laugh my head off at, at watching you guys. It's going to be brutal, man. Like I, uh, it's, <laughs> it's the highest point on the island. It's the highest drivable road in the Whit Sundays. The finish line is absolutely spectacular. Um, we think of it, a, a lot of crowd up on that section of the, of the course, but it's 24.4% for about 150 metres, 200 metres. Oh, it's it's very if you've done St. Croix, it's very similar to the Beast at a certain section of it. And it's a very, very tough. But as, as, we both, as you all pointed out, it's that section along the airport, which is uh, two laps of the runway of the airport, which can be quite windy in the morning. It sets you up, so it's going to be a very, very interesting TT for sure. And, and speaking to Robbie McEwen, who's commentating the green jersey, the Tour de France, will be commentating this race. He said it's probably the most difficult style of TT you can possibly do. Because there's a lot of relying on on power on that flat section, and then trying to convert to getting up a climb very, very quickly is is very, very hard. So it'll be interesting. We have a, we have a few uh, questions we want to get to uh, from the fans that are watching. Um, and Has on people watch it? That's okay. There are people really? watching. We haven't scared them all away. Yeah, I was just getting into combat. So uh, <laughs> most people want to know what you're doing when it comes to your training to prepare for this and also about, you know, the type of 
bike or shoes or things that you might be using for this because it is a three day event and you have to kind of save your energy for the last day and all of these things. Do, do any of you have any kind of unique ways that you're training for this? Well, I'm trying, so it's between you three. <laughs> I'm, avo I'm avoiding cramping. I see bananas, so yeah. uh, lots of healthy food. Cramping. The key, the key <laughs> is not cramping in this event. Yeah, but McMahon, you got to eat the banana, not put it in your pocket. Oh. <laughs> no, that is that has other other benefits. <laughs> I mean, the cycle jersey. Um, I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of backing on. Uh, I mean, I, 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 I'm, I, 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 yeah. I'm just back in my yeah. yeah. Um I've I've always worked quite well even when I was in IT stuff off off uh, good endurance endurance based training and uh and a lot lot of recovery stuff and find that, that high end uh, as long as you don't try to force it out it comes quite nicely. So I'm uh, I've got Iron Man New Zealand in a couple of weeks and uh and hopefully just get a little bit of yeah, a little bit of leg speed stuff those uh those two weeks in between the race and um that should bring I mean, up my Zealand. ability I mean, just nicely. Will, I mean, New Zealand will help with that leg speed, eh, Brent? Yeah, because yeah, 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 yeah. it's, yeah. it's, it's a real easy course, Ironman New Zealand. Yeah. I've heard it's just, yeah. it's a cakewalk Smooth road. one, right? Smooth road. Smooth road. Smooth road. Dead flat. It's downhill, yeah. actually. Net downhill. Yeah. And so Cam, I, you do what? There's a really interesting, while you're talking about, you know, your training, also, what about your recovery? Because there are, you know, days in between, and then you restart the race. How do you guys recover as well? Good question. You got a big pick. Yeah, that's I think that's just walks around with the Normatec boots all the time, I and mean, they're just everywhere. <laughs> they're between everything. He's Normatec. <laughs> Good well, I better, oh, better oh, red oh, wine oh. in your drink bottle. <laughs> yeah. On oh, no, Island, we've got all the massage therapists there for you. We've got the physios. We've got um, the ice baths. So we've done everything we can. But what do you guys do? Anything particular? Do you were you warm down? Were you were you just go out the hotel, hit the aircon? Like, what do you tend to do? Recovery? It's not really between that Friday race at, at 5 a 5 p.m. in the afternoon. You're going to be finished say at 6 6:30 by the time you have dinner. The next morning you're up at at 5 a.m. Right. It's it's a it's a very very tight recovery window. Is you guys do anything, or it's just part and parcel of being a pro? Yeah, I think I think uh, definitely uh, you you got to make sure you you cool down and you flush out the days uh, the days activity. And you know, obviously, if you can get a massage, that's great. But I think I think even just like as soon as you finish the race, getting getting a recovery ride in um you know to try and you know it's it's going to be intense and you're going to be building lactic and you're going to have to get rid of that before your body can actually start to rest and recover and sleep well for for the next day so uh i think for me you know we have the endurance from ironman racing to race multiple days but we have to be able to recover and sort of get our system reset uh to be able to go again and so i think by the third day we'll still be strong but uh but it's going to be important to actually get your muscles loosened off and and get the, the lactic out so a good probably 30 to an hour ride uh, after the the day's events are gonna get that done i think i'll approach it like uh like you maca you like you approach your your muscles during your career nice and tight if everything <laughs> operates well when it's tight, it's tight and ready to go. I used to get massages too at training camp. I'd stretch for about ten minutes. No, no, there was no stretching. You got massage for sure, but but uh, MG tried to get you to do Sportoga, and you're like, no, no, sorry, I don't, I don't, I don't do that. That's gonna stretch the muscles. I need my, I need my muscles to be like a wound up spring, ready to go. Yeah, m muscle tension gives muscle re tension yeah. rebound. Bang. Exactly. <laughs> we've got all we've got all the recoveries. Recovery's been the one thing we've focused on, so we made sure that we uh we've got the massage surface there, we've got physios, people that can strap and uh and everybody and it's, that and it's, it's first come, first serve, so whoever's the fastest Actually, gets the most recovery. The line, yeah, you get straight in there. So just the moral of the story is don't be Oh, unless you're top three because then you have to do interviews, eh? So if you're yeah, fourth you get to go straight. 
That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah come forth. Yeah. Fourth place gets get the best forth. recovery. Yeah, come forth every day yeah. to try and win the race, but you can't. You you, can't usually, I'm in the uh, the hotel room with a little plastic bag. I walk down the hallway to the vending machine and find the find the ice machine and and hold the bag there, fill it up, go back to my room, empty the ice, go back, fill up the fill up the bag of ice, but. I mean, this is awesome here with you guys at Super League. Everything, like the massage, physio, recovery baths, everything's on tap and um, makes it makes it pretty easy, eh? Well, that means there's no excuses for you boys to to go shit, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can't go, I didn't recover. I don't know what it is. It was, mate, if only I had a bloody massage therapist, well, you do. If only I had my physio with me, well, you do. Why'd you raise shit? It's all I'm on 13. your <laughs> All on your shoulders, so no good. All right. Hey, no, I've noticed there's a couple couple questions, and I'd love love to hear what um Cam and Brent are gonna do. Uh, a couple questions about um like are we riding discs, and are we taking two bikes, road or TT, for the for the for that um for that second second day's race, and what what are you guys gonna do? Um, well, I'm uh, I'm going down to Oz because I'm up in North America for uh, four weeks. So and I, I got my first. Where are you going? I said, what what, are you, what bike are you taking? Well, I'm going. I'm going to be away for five weeks, so I don't get off my TT bike for that long. So I'm bringing a TT bike and a road bike. So I'm going to bring a TT and a road bike to the race. Okay. Um, yeah. Cam, tell me your life story now. Uh, well, so I'm going to be, uh, gonna be traveling now. I, uh, trying to sort it out. I mean, honestly, I think having, uh, basically I'm flying out for the race and then I'm flying straight back. So trying to figure out how much I can bring, what I can bring, and then what's going to be the most advantageous, um, bring a road bike with training wheels only. Yeah. 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 And clip on box wheels. and clip-ons. No, no, don't oh. even, don't even, don't bring clip ons, oh, yeah. bring your, Bring your armadillo training tires. Duh. Yeah. And well, then there you go. Like That's a... easy. Yeah, nope. I mean, I don't. I think the the. Di- I've never seen the hill, man. I mean, it, it's gonna be one of those things where I have a feeling, no matter what I bring, I'm gonna wish I had something else. So. Yeah, I'm gonna have to see if I can a... make the weight limit. I was trying to think because I'm a lot of the questions around you pros have been what sort of bike. I know the Polyansky boys were going, what sort of bike should I bring? And I know Richard Murray was saying, do I need a TT bike? And Mate, the thing is, as I said, is that, that that section on the on the runway, the airport, it's three and a half k. It's dead flat. It's it's open to the wind. You tend to get a, a headwind. Your first uh, probably your first seven hundred and fifty meters out will be directly into a headwind, and you're going to be roaring back with a tailwind, and you're going to make a swinging left hand turn, a one eighty degree turn. You're going to be in that headwind again. And you're going to come back. So it's uh, you're going to be moving. Whether you're going to have to punch that wind, or you're going to have to zoom along with the wind behind you, it's not. You know, the climb is important. How important, I don't know. I, I was actually stumped on what bike to recommend. I, you know, I feel bad. I'm like a lot of the guys are asking, I'm like, mate, I, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. I'd, wear, I'd bring a TT bike, yeah, I'd, uh, and, uh, and try and get up. But this hill is so steep, you're going to want to be able to feather your gears. But I, I, I don't believe, I think you're going to get in your, in your 25 or your 27 even and just, and just tick away at that. You're not going to be moving many gears at all on the climb. Be interesting. I think. Be- I think. Yeah. The, I'm my. I'm gonna bring my TT bike as light as possible. Mm, yeah, that'd be good. So no drink you're, fa- you're fast on the flats, and then you don't want to be carrying any extra weight going up that hill, and then adding extra how, gearing. How many extra cages are you gonna put on? Um, I'm gonna have four. Yeah. Hydration. Cool water hydration, because it's. Yeah. it's it's key because you gotta you gotta be hydrated for the afternoon's race. So I'll I'll yeah, probably have two two liters. Yeah. Well, six k up here that could take you twenty minutes. <laughs> Hopefully not. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you guys oh, are the only. Dude. It's funny looking at your birth dates, right? Because when I was sitting there chatting this morning, I said, "Okay, we're gonna be speaking to Terenzo, Brent, and Cam." And you all you guys are in your thirties, mate. All the other boys are in their twenties. Yeah, this is like the what? senior citizens uh, roundtable right here. Jared's got it in the geriatric old. hour. Mm. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I, I do uh-huh. recall many – you're one of the older ones now, Terenzo. You're not that young, vibrant little kid anymore. You're one of the statesmen of the sport, right? So you got kids that I was that just are... thinking, all, all, my, all my awesome jokes now, they're, they're dad jokes. They're not actually funny jokes. Not that I ever was yeah. funny, but now they're just 
dad humor. It's terrible. Yeah, it was like when I used to hang out yeah. with you and you were looking at me like I was a weirdo. It's what they're going to look at you now. Oh, your jokes aren't funny. <laughs> but you think this, uh, you know, there's been a lot of talk here in Australia around this young Jacob Burt whistle. He's a, a monster runner. He's got a sub eight minute 3,000 meter time, which is huge, huge running. Anyone in the running game knows that. And uh, he's under 23 world champion. This really short dynamic racing, he has a, a, a swim weakness, right? So uh, I think these tighter swims can nullify that. Do you think he can do some damage? I've never raced the kid. I, I just hear amazing things about him. Obviously I not. Mean, anybody okay. that can run that fast can run with, you know, if you can run with Mullen, you can run with the Brownleys, you got a shot. And I don't know if there's that many of us in the race that can actually go head to head. So if you can drop an eight minute 3K, then. You sure that wasn't for 2K? No, no, he's not an Ironman guy. He's not an Ironman guy. He's a fast guy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, That's your yeah. Ironman race pace, isn't it? Too? I was like, I can keep up to that kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. None of you even even buckled when I said, "Look, I do that every day. I do it for 42 yeah, yeah. minutes." <laughs> no, kid's fast, man. This kid's fast. There's a lot of talk. I was speaking with Miles Stewart, CEO here of Triathlon Australia, and he got a lot of lot of Triathlon Australia is backing a lot on this kid. He's, he's a superstar. I saw him win in uh, France this year. He beat he beat Johnny Brownley in the the French Grand Prix in Dunkirk. It was a sprint race. So in that shorter distance, he seems really really fast. But then he seems to get exposed a little bit in, in some of these IT WTS events where it's a longer swim. So it'll be interesting. But uh, you know, anyone Brent, you know this better than anyone. We'll finish up soon. But you know this better than anyone having raced those old Formula One races here and those tight. It's all about position. You know, when you've got a 300 meter swim, pretty much everyone in this field can swim 300 within 10 seconds of each other, right? Mm -hmm. So it's uh, it's going to be that first 100 meters. So that's actually 115 meters to the first can. You know, are you ready to be have the shit kicked out of you and beaten up? I know we talk about aggressive swims, but it's going to be brutal. Is uh, you ready for that? Uh, I, I think so. I think I'm going to go into the uh, the water aerobics. Uh, class the, and then uh just have them all pile on me and just get used to that and uh Hold on you know I, th I, I think you can i think you, what, what was that being held underwater mate. yeah yeah, you know, gonna, yeah, yeah exactly gonna practice holding my breath and uh no um yeah. Yeah, i think the, the swim's gonna be important but i think it's uh i think it's the trend the transition and the start of the bike is that's also going to be key. That's where it's going to get shaken up and you got to be able to get on the bike and, you know, hit four or 500 watts for a, at least a couple of minutes and it's going to break up. So if you're, if you're at all slow through transition, you can say goodbye to a group. And if you can't get going on the bike, then you're just going to keep going backwards. So uh, positioning is important in the swim, but I think it's how you get going after the swim that's going to decide whether you're in the race or you're, whether you're moving back from the race. Mm -hmm. And hey, Cam, with the one with the right in round two of the triple mix, we're finishing with the swim. You're one of the bigger guys. You're a good swimmer. But starting with the run, you can stay close enough, cover your gaps on the uh, on the bike, and you win that one. Are you good ah. enough to win? I don't, I don't know. I mean, we'll see. I, there was there was once upon a time I was a 200 freestyler. I mean, that used to be what? my jam. But we'll see if uh, we'll see if we can dial up some of that speed. Uh, I mean, it's it's always it's fun to go race the IT guys and swim, and it's it's always eye opening to see how fast they're actually swimming. I mean, those top IT guys are flying in the water now. I'm watching uh, Aaron Royal dust us at Island House just. Yeah. I mean, we were all swimming in a group, and he was just off doing his own thing, you know, 20 seconds up the road. And it's – we'll see. I mean, and it's uh, – I think it's going to be interesting to see how guys pull up. Like, I mean, myself. I mean, Brent's going down there early, but, you know, the guys in North America, it's it's winter time. We haven't really been racing for a while. And this is going to be my first race out the gate, so I'm just hoping I can blow the cobwebs out in the first of the three races on the first day and go well from there. But – We'll see. I mean, I think being bigger helps in the water. When you're getting beat up, you can throw a few punches, but it's so oh, great. It's a of, Matt, you got to be positioned well. Yeah. Well, we want Matt, you you're throw as many punches as you want. It's going to be tight and aggressive, and it's all—it's for us. It's about—it's about 
making no mistakes, right? Super League's mistake-free racing positioning and, uh, you know, that the course is definitely set that way. The swim course is the starting point and finish point is different. We tried to cut a little bit out of those tight turns, but anytime you're going out 100 metres, you, you have to make a turn somewhere. So it's, uh, you know, we're going to be saying that in the uh, in the pro briefing. If you want to have a soup because someone punched you in the face, well, go and have a soup with someone else because that's racing. You know, as long as it's fair. It's uh, So a lot of the discussion when I mentioned that to the guys was uh, they talked about you, Cam, one of the bigger athletes in that swim being, you know, the smaller guys, despite being super fast, they all think they're going to get to that first swim can first, and it's the bigger guys that seem to be able to muscle their way around a little bit better. So it'll be interesting to see. Hi guys, so I got to do my moderating job, and not oh, you were still here, Stace. <laughs> get cut off. <laughs> so uh, we, we kind of have to wrap this up. I know that you know we can talk about this for a while because it is really, really exciting. So um, I don't know, Chris, if you have kind of like a last question, but I wanted to thank our sponsor, Hamilton Island, and all of the participants of this live. It was amazing for our first one. Lots of comments, likes, and all that stuff. So I don't know, Chris, if you want to kind of just wrap it up and ask any other question. Oh, well, uh, if, if it was only you three guys in the race, no one else mattered who's going to win. Where's the podium? I love your work, Terenzo. <laughs> Where's the podium? Too, too slow, Cam. Too slow. <laughs> you got to be fast. Brent, it's better, Super League. Better be quicker than that in the race, Brent. I saw Cam going down. Are you still? Brent's still thinking about the question. What do you mean? He's Canadian. Up to it. He's got eight hours. I'm gonna let them. I'm gonna let them go. I'm Canadian. He's, he's Canadian. He's gonna. He's gonna be I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> so you Canadians. Hey. <laughs> Don't hate on the Canadian. Blame I no, no, we're just saying how polite you guys are. We are. Yeah. <laughs> Blame Canada. No, you first. No, no, you first. No, no, you first. It's the last one, but you can have it. There you go. <laughs> well, anyway, boys, thanks for ha thanks for joining us. I'm looking forward to seeing you. As I'll see you on the island. Hey, Cam, what day do you get down here? You're, you're flying literally from Boulder to here. Uh, yeah, well, I get it Thursday night, you know, right before the race. No, yeah, I get it at Tuesday. Tuesday. Oh, okay. Tuesday. Tuesday. Come I need to check it out a little bit. Mate, come in a little early. If you need somewhere to stay in Sydney, I can hook you up. I don't. I don't want you. I don't want Brent beating you, mate. Uh, well, yeah, me neither. But you know, I got to keep the wife happy, and I, with the two little ones, I just can't get away that much. Okay, I'm done. All right. Too easy. We'll make it work. We'll make it work. Okay. Yeah, Thanks, guys. Job. That was awesome. Yeah. I'll see you. Good later. seeing you. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. yeah. Stay safe. Bye. Yeah. Stay safe. Bye. I'm down swimming. <laughs>